Hey, Shalom, Shalom. I'd like to say all praises due to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Rakakadash, and double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone. Peace and blessings to all you brothers teaching in truth and sincerity throughout the four corners of the globe. All right, this is a portion of the Jim S. Boston camp, camp coming together once again, you know, for a quickly uh, uh, impromptu video, you know, so to speak. And, uh, Hey, in times, times, in these times, this is perilous times, no doubt. Okay. And, you know, the scriptures tell Akiyam to be circumspect and have an unction to know all things, man. So even though, you know, uh, uh, two thirds of our people in the world and these heathen nations, they're not, you know, eyeballing stuff thoroughly. We are we eyeball everything, okay, and then we filter it through the scriptures. And in doing so, you know this this thing over there in uh, Ukraine, okay, with Russia and America. All right, these these things are going to heighten the the how can I say the vibration on the earth, okay, to where. We're getting ready for uh, World War Three, the war that ends all wars. Okay, and then on top of that, you know, you got the famine coming, so on and so forth. And we're not saying that what's going on over there is the cause of the famine, but these key players, okay, that's in that war, are orchestrating on different levels, so to speak. Okay. And the level that we're going to talk about right now is how things are moving over there in that region. Because when you read Ezekiel, the 38th chapter, right? This is going to set up the, the, uh, the stage for Armageddon, okay, to happen. And we know what Armageddon is really about. Armageddon is really about resources and who controls the globe after these resources are uh, taken in. Con, everybody can agree with that, right? Con. Huh. You see? And uh, you got a uh, scripture, brother? Yeah, I got one. Con, I got something for you real quick. Uh, Revelations 11, verse 14, the second war was passed, and behold, the third war cometh quickly. Yeah, and that's that's what we're going to we're gonna hit on that. Because what what is transpiring over there in this... Uh, the, the brother Zion, you know, he can articulate it more than what I can perceive it to be. You know what I'm saying? I can perceive it in my head, but I can't articulate it the way that this brother can. But what's what's being done over there is a power play to the to the most high power. OK. And Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai has given, you know, Vladimir Putin the green light to go full steam ahead, man. Okay. Um, this is Ephesians 5. I'm going to start at verse uh, 15 because you mentioned it earlier, but there's a point in verse 17. It mm -hmm. says, Seeing that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Yeah. And the will of the Lord is what? To gather all nations in what? The valley of what? Yeah, yeah, that's that's right. Right. So, uh, Slack it, bro. Go ahead, bro. Go ahead. I just wanted to read that for you, real quick. Mm -hmm. uh, Revelation chapter 16, verse 14. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of the Most High Almighty. Mm -hmm. uh, verse 15 Behold, I come as a thief in the night. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments. We see walk naked and they see ashamed. And he gathered them together in the place called in the Hebrew tongue, I'm a God one. Yeah. Yeah. And this is what's happening. Okay. Like we said, this is a this is gonna be a war to end all wars. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna be mostly about, about resources and who has control of the resource. See, this is where the this is where Satan can't cast out Satan anymore, right? Because once Satan gets this resources it doesn't matter which which side gets it the thing is who's in control of it 
And this is going to be the war starter right there. You get what I'm saying? Because they're not all going to be on the same page. Everybody wants to flip to the next page and say, I'm in control. And then this person over here, well, no, I, I conquered that region. So I'm in control of this. This is the same thing that goes back to First Maccabees. You know? Yeah, like you said, it's like you say, uh, if Satan be divided against Satan, how then can his house stand? And you see the in infighting amongst uh, NATO, this infighting amongst NATO. Taza Yaf, you brought out last week on on the submarine uh, yep. deal that was um that was basically intercepted by America. And I actually uh, read into that article and saw how you know the, the French had a deal set up uh, with the oh, Aussies, yeah. and um you know basically America came in and 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 bullied the deal. And how the French tried to get the, uh, you know, the other rest of the European members to be like, look, man, look what this, these people are doing. That caused a rift. French scaled back on their relationships with America and actually mm -hmm. threatened to leave, you know, the, the, that alliance. But it goes into, you know, the European Union and NATO was um, an entity, all right, to, for unity, for them to come together and to solve problems. But that unity is now becoming a problem because there's infighting. So what what, what do you have? Satan being divided against Satan, and ultimately their rulership is going to come to a halt. But go ahead, bro. You got it. Yeah, yeah. You want that real quick? I'll, I'll bring that up. Yeah, yeah, um, please. Uh, Matthew 12 and uh, 25 and 26. And Yahweh Shai knew their thoughts and said unto them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and yeah. every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? Yeah. So when you go into Obadiah, right, the seventh chapter, I mean the seventh verse, Salaki. When you read that, and who, somebody got that? I got you ready yeah. in the crowd again. This is Obadiah and, um, one and verse seven, and it reads: All the all the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee. They that eat thy bread have laid, laid a wound under thee. There was none understanding in him. And, you know, that's that goes into NATO itself. OK, because you know, America is the one that devised this plan with NATO being, you know, on the forefront to defend against Russia. Right. And America has been allied with these NATO countries for so long. They have shared bread with them. You know what I'm saying? But now Putin making those moves over there. Now people are saying Putin's a smart dude. He's, he's strategically moving on a country that was his in the first place. And he's gathering it all up. And it started from where? It started from um, Crimea. Okay. When he told America, don't go into Crimea because I got business ventures there. And then from there, he started saying to himself, you know, well, I got to get ready because I want all the USSR back. And this goes back into the Ezekiel 38 chapter. You see? So all these countries that was allied through NATO, what they're about to do is flip on America. Because they can't, they can't, they no longer can see the profits coming from America. America is a broke country. Okay? The deficit is too high. All right? It's through the roof. And there's no way to heal Babylon just like the scriptures say. You know? Somebody want to grab that for me real quick. Yeah. They would take it home. I also got an article too. Um, if, if, if you want it right now, bro, or you want to read that. Read, read this verse, and then okay. I'll, I'll take the article. All right. All right. Jeremiah 51. I'll start at verse 6. Uh, Flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity, for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. He will mm -hmm. render unto her a recompense. Babylon have been the golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunk drunken of her wine. Therefore, the nations are mad. Yeah. Babylon is to lock it. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, okay. Verse 8. Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. How for her? Take bomb for her pain. If so be, she may be healed. We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Uh, forsake her and let us go, everyone, into his own country. 
for her judgment reaches into heaven and is lifted up even to wow. the sky. Hey, hey, if I can add too, yeah, um, is it, it's it's crazy how well it's not crazy, but it's beautiful how the heavenly father is working. Because as that brother was reading that scripture, how it says, you know, forsake her, leave Babylon. You got you got you got the French. Um, I think it was Le Pen. We bring this up, uh, uh, bring this up, and in, in this election, you know, she said if she got elected, what she wanted to do was basically to leave NATO, because yep. NATO was a uh, uh, basically they they wanted to leave from underneath, underneath the guise of America. You know what I'm saying? And here in this article, it says uh, that the, the, the headline reads Turkey is tired, and if it leaves NATO, and it says uh, for 70 years of a NATO membership, Turkey has not seen any advantage. The only argument in his favor is the right of veto, writes the Turkish newspaper. You know, according to the author of this article, uh, Mehmet Ali uh, Guler, Anarka should uh, close, uh, Anarka should close the Black Sea and the caucus in the western gates of Central Asia to the United States and become part of the Great Eurasia Partnership. There you Turkey go. Turkey should sever ties with NATO the author convinced, as reported by uh, Spisnik. Now, if you could read, um, if, of, of Karab, you could look up real quick uh, the uh, the Great Eurasia Partnership. I'm going to continue on with this. Mm -hmm. Leaving the alliance, and, and again, I, I'll say that again, that's the uh, the Great Eurasia Partnership. All right? It says, um, leaving the alliance would mean moving to a strategic partnership with Russia and Iran. Yeah, Iran. So, so brothers should already be in their mind, you should already be thinking of like the brother Taziyav said, what Isaiah, uh, not Isaiah, uh, Ezekiel, the 38th chapter. Okay. Yep. Because it talks about Gog and Magog and, uh, and all the Tomei, bands joining together. Yeah? Persia. Okay. Um, I'm, I'll keep going. It says leaving um, the alliance would mean moving toward a strategic partnership with Russia and Iran, as well as an integration into a new world, quote, a quote, new world, end quote, through the Shanghai Corporation Organization, SOCO, and the group of BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. Mm -hmm. It should be reminded that due to the events in the Ukraine on May 18th, Finland and Sweden submitted a request to the Secretary General of NATO to join the alliance. Turkey has blocked the start of the process of reviewing these applications, Turkish President uh, Erdogan said that um, pronounce Slaki if I'm, I'm pronouncing this, this word wrong. Um, Ankara. Ankara, the water. Ankara uh, could not say yes to the membership of Finland and Sweden and NATO because it could not believe the assurances about relationship with representatives of the Kurdish Workers Party, which is banned in Turkey. All right, go ahead, Tazayaf. You got it. Yeah, All man. Right. So that 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 proves that these nations over the I one and seven. All right, they're getting ready to flip, man. Okay, because yeah. their profit their profit is going down with Babylon the Great. They're not seeing any gain anymore with this place. So you got the the upper echelons, the elites, right? What they're trying to do is throw America, the corporation. In the trash, man. And there's only one way for the trash to be taken out, and we know that's with fire. Okay, and this uh, is why these uh, nuclear uh, proliferation deals didn't go through. This is why it's more, uh, 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 you know, nuclear weapons on the earth at this time. Because when you read Isaiah, the, uh, the ninth chapter, right? The ninth chapter, yeah. Gotcha, brother. If you, you got it. Yeah, hey, do you mind if I bring this up real quick? Because the brother had mentioned it about the, the Great Eurasian Partnership. It says the Greater Eurasian Partnership has two broad economic goals. First, it aims to connect Russia and the EAEU to China's Belt and Road Initiative, which is BRI. Its second lesser goal is to move beyond China and connect the EAEU with Iran, India, and Southeast Asia. And that goes back to all the way to Genesis. When you look at the, uh, was it the King's Road? Who was in control of those? It was Edom and it was 
it was a uh, uh, Moab. Okay, they're the ones on this earth that's been doing business the longest with trade between countries. Look at Marco Polo. Marco Polo, that's an Italian. Uh, 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 what was he? Uh, Italian explorer, right? Mm -hmm. He got the noodles from where? From Moab. Okay, so they've been they've been doing the king's trade, you know, on the king's road for a long time. This, these are the businessmen of the world, Moab and Edom, and they always going to shake hands to move whatever they have to move. And this is what people don't understand. You know, if you look at those algorithm reports with Elder uh, Ariala and the Elder from England, uh, Raquam Raquam Raqua. If I'm saying his name right, Salaki brother, but those 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 algorithms tell you how business is moving, and this is a very key part of what you see going on. But in the end, these two nations are going to have to turn on each other and fight. They're going to have to because it's all about that resource and control, man. And this is why, you know, that gathering is happening in the Valley of, uh, of Jehoshaphat. Khan, and also it's that split in which you have you have basically two sides of Esau. You, mm -hmm. have, you have one part of Esau that's going to, you know, side with, you know, uh, with, with, with China and yep. Iran. But that's that's part of what the brother wrote, read, you know, Satan be divided against Satan. Satan, yep. Know? Which they don't really call them. They're not considered the beasts, uh, which that's written about in 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 Revelation. Um. Yeah. All right. So where we at here? We had our Isaiah nine. I think you wanted. To okay. Read. Real yeah. quick. Real quick. I wanted to go back. Uh, I wanted to go back to. Um. I had another article, right, Karab? This is in the Independent, and um, cause 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 the the two scriptures that stand out from the beginning was, uh, was it? Obadiah one and seven, mm -hmm. and then the brother the scripture. This brother that everybody going to their own nation, and yeah. and going into the division of of NATO. So this is this is from the Independent, and the, the title of it, the headline reads: NATO is experiencing a uh, brain death, says Emmanuel Macron. All right, mm. and um, Emmanuel Rac Macron is the uh, president, uh, the leader of mm. France. So it says Emmanuel Macron has described NATO as brain dead, uh, citing warning U.S. support for the transatlantic military alliance. The French president suggests U.S. interest in protecting the global order had reduced under the tenor of Donald Trump, who had proceeded an American first policy, who had pursued an American first policy. The U.S. president has previously described Europe as, quote, foe, which is, quote, almost as bad as China, end quote, and hinted that he may pull out of the alliance if the terms were not altered to suit the United States. What we are currently experiencing is the brain death of NATO, Mr. Macron told the Economist magazine in an interview published on Thursday. Mm. Questions, a question in the future of the military alliance, the French president added, quote, there's a considerable risk that in the long run we will disappear geo, uh, geopolitically or at least that we will no longer be in control of our destiny, end quote. So, so this is, this is again, the breaking up um, of the European Union pursuant to the book of Daniels when it goes and talks about, you know, the ten toes. Mm -hmm. um, some of them were clay. And some of them were um, were iron. iron. Some were strong, and some were weak. But when they mixed together, it didn't make for a good mixture. All right, and this is what's happening. And and and, and we were we were earlier we were talking about how the Fed um, raised the interest rates, and what that did was it kept loans at a low price in in, in mortgage houses, and and, and 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 enabled you to borrow without having to spend much money back. But what they're trying to do right now is in, in to curve inflation. They're going to higher the interest rates. Now, the same process is being taken place in uh, with the European Central Banking System. 
And around 2008, when the, when the collapse first happened, you had the, the, the nation of pigs, which was Portugal, uh, Italy, uh, Greece, and um, uh, uh, Spain, Spain. Um, yeah. which was really going under. But because the European Union lowered the interest rates and they were able to get loans on a low and nobody was coming back for their money, you know, those, those nations were able to stay afloat. But now mm -hmm. as they try to curve inflation and they rise the interest rates, what's going to happen is those countries are going to be exposed. Why? Because lenders are going to request for their money back and really they ain't going to really have it. So those, they ain't, those they ain't got nothing. Gonna, they got nothing. They got nothing. So they're going to be exposed again like they once were. And it's really going to bring down the European Union. All right. And then they're going to look. Everybody's going to look to scramble to, to save their own life. Everybody has their own personal interests within the European Union. They're not as organized and, and unified as they want you to believe. You see, Italy has its own agenda concerning mm -hmm. Russia or relationships. All right. Portugal, Spain, they all each have their own agenda. All right. That they're going to have to look after themselves. And plus, politically, there's elections coming up. So people are going to be wondering, what, what have you done as a politician to curve inflation or to, to, to make sure that we got gas to heat our homes or the, uh, the gas prices are low? You know, so, so it's going to be a real shake of what is to come in the next yeah, the couple of months. It's going to get real interesting. Yeah, the elephants in the room are going to start showing, you know, mm -hmm. and nobody's going to have an answer for it. Okay, but that's this is where Putin holds the the the... The stick, you see what I'm saying? Because he has the answer for what? Yeah, yeah, your energy resources. He holds that stick. Okay. For that region over there, he has the fertilizer. He holds that stick. You want to grow food, you gotta come to me. You want to heat your home, you want gas, you want electricity, you gotta come to me. Right. You see how the flip is gonna happen? The flip is gotta happen. It's gonna happen. Because, like you said, these countries don't got nothing. So the big bad ruble that's uh, uh, gaining steam, so to speak, what they gonna do? They gonna jump on the bandwagon? You got yeah. to that ru that ruble is picking up <laughs> because because what's happening is um, as we come into these last days, um, reality is gonna be exposed, basically. All right, and it's gonna be what would you rather have a, a, a green a dollar with George Washington on it or a hundred dollar bill with Benjamin Franklin on it, or gas to heat your homes mm -hmm. and to heat your businesses or, or, or literal petrol, you know, to put in your car or steel, which is a commodity or um, uh, a dove's dung, which is a uh, 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 fertilizer, fertilizer, you know, to grow your crops or grains to make your bread. These are all things Russia possesses, man. God. All right. Satellites, you know, steel, metals, uh, raw materials. Now, on on the other side of the Atlantic, what what does America possess? Not much, Nothing. right? Nothing. But an inflated, worthless dollar. That's All right, it. and the world is gonna have to make a decision on who they're gonna side with. And just like you seen in that article, Turkey is really we we know through the spirit. We do these lessons to build up the you know the people who might be on the fences, faithful, even the the people that are part of this thing. But we know through the spirit that Turkey is going to side. Let's get Ezekiel to 30. Matter of fact, I, I'll, I'll pull it up. Yeah, yeah. I got it. Okay. Okay. Go ahead, brother. I, I want to show this quick article since you had mentioned about uh, Russia, uh, you know, these nations leaning on Russia. Uh, this is the article on RT News posted today. It says, Ma major European nation buys tons of Russian gold. It says, Switzerland report reportedly made first, uh, what is it, bullion purchase from the sanctioned country since February. So Switzerland imported gold from Russia in May for the first time since February. Bloomberg report on Tuesday, according to the article, the move, the move suggested that the, ind the industry stance towards Russia, Russia's precious metals may be softening. Mm. So Switzerland, Switzerland shipped more than three tons of gold from Russia last month. Bloomberg cited data, it says, from the Swiss Federal Customs Administration. The purchase represent about two percent of Swiss uh, billion uh, bullion bullion, uh, bullion uh, imports in May. The country is a key refining hub that handles two thirds of the world's gold. So I just wanted to touch on that real quick. And that's that's raw gold. Can we see this picture? This is this is raw gold. This gold hasn't been refined yet. You see, 
the impurities are still in it. That's what you see the cracks and stuff like that. So the Swiss, the Swiss are gonna they're gonna boil it down and make it purer. Right, they, so they buying cheap go. They're going to Russia though. <laughs> yeah, from mm -hmm. from Russia. Huh. You got it, Doc. Just wanted to bring that out real quick. You got the scripture? Yeah. I know the brother, the brother Zion was going to bring something up. Ezekiel 38. No, I, I didn't have nothing. Uh, the brother Taza Wall said he had Ezekiel 38. You got a Yakalum? Okay, calm, calm. You got a Yakalum? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to start it. You want me to start at one? I'll get to the point. This is Ezekiel um, 38 and 1. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tabal, and prophesy against him. And say, Thus saith the Lord, um, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tabal, and I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws. And I will bring thee forth and all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, and all of them handling swords. And that's speaking of, you know, uh, the Russia, which were the, uh, the Median Empire, along with the Persian Empire. Okay. And then you have these other bands that's going to join on to them like the brother read in the article, you know, these, these countries are going to join. It, it's, you see the layout, you see what's happening. Just like this brother just brought out the, the article about them buying gold. Then the brother Zion, he just brought out the article about Turkey wanting to leave NATO. Okay. Oh. Iran's already on board with the BRICS nation. You see what I'm saying? These things are already, they're already here. It already happened. Mm -hmm. Just like the scripture, the prophecy is saying, you know? Right. Yeah, but I, I think um yeah, Khan, the um the rut the Gog and you know the Gog is uh Gog and Magog is Russia. Russia and the, yeah. the, uh, modern day medians goes into um the the Russians as well. And then you okay. have the, the, the media Persian Empire or Persians um going into Elam and you know um uh, uh, Persian. I think that's that's what you was, that's what you was trying to say. Yeah, Karnak, yeah. he tells you down in verse five. It says Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmet. Yep. Mm -hmm. Gomar and all his band, the house of Togomar of the north quarters, and all of his band, and many people with thee. And be thou Turkey. prepared. Come. It says, "Be thou prepared and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company." That are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them. Mm -hmm. And that's what Russia has did, giving them the backing that they're getting ready to support these countries with. Okay, when it comes to famine, when it comes to military uh, defenses. Okay, because if these countries leave NATO, best believe America is going to be hunting them down. Like, no, you can't do that. And if you do, we're gonna bomb the hell out of you and put sanctions on you. But like like it says, Russia's gonna be a guard onto them. Okay. Okay, America puts sanctions on you. So what you have to do now is join the on the uh on the ruble tip. You get what I'm saying? Fuck America, get down with us, and you'll be all right. That's what they're gonna say. I have a precept at the back you um, the book of Joel three, and I'm gonna start at nine. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles, prepare war, wake up the mighty men, let mm -hmm. all the men of war draw near, let them come up, beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears, let the weak say I am strong. And if I may ask something off because you mentioned what Russia was doing over there in Iran, the Iranian president said this, I believe it was two years ago, saying that if it was going 10 years back, they would be afraid Um. Of America, but ever since Russia hit them off with those, I believe it's the S four hundreds, four hundreds, yeah, S three, con. They they basically said like, you know, if the U S wants to, want smoke, <laughs> Jane, go, we can go. Want smoke, man, they down for it. So you know they was weak at one point, but 
they were made strong. If, if I didn't mention that, that the weeks him strong. Yeah, huh. and in the, India is the number one <clears throat> country. Okay, I can say I can say that in my in my eyes that really stood up because that prime minister gave it to <laughs> America, boy. He laid them out. You hear what I'm saying? And huh. they have they have nuclear capability now because of who? Because of Russia. That's right. And they have over 1.4 million active um active personnel. There you go. So Russia is the battery pack right now for all these uh heathen nations. For Jeremiah 50 and 51 to happen. Yep. That's right. You had something to say, Corral? Now I was gonna mention too, because um that goes back to what we have brought out in Ephesians the fifth chapter. It says understanding what the will of the Lord is. And, you, know, you have people going against, uh, you know, simple people of the world siding with Ukraine and America. But hey, you should want to, you should want Russia to win this. You know what I'm saying? If, if uh, this is for, especially for Jake, you should want Russia to to, to actually be uh, uh, going even harder because that's ultimately the will of Yahweh about Shem And yeah. that means our our kingdom is coming. You know, and Joel they, the third chapter. They're gonna eventually try to fight against the Lord, but once again, and in, 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 in fifteen and three says what. Uh, the Lord is the man of war. How about uh, Yah the, the Lord? Yahweh is his name. All right. So he's just setting this. It's a, it's a dramatic story. He's just uh, intensifying the plot, man. You know, that's for it. that great fight that's going to take place. Karnak, if I could finish in Joel uh, mm -hmm. 3, it, um, going down to verse 12, it says, Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, mm -hmm. for there will I sit to judge all the heathen roundabout. Put ye in the sickle. For the harvest is ripe. Come get you down, for the press is full, the fats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. All right. All these yeah. nations had 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 their part in the downfall of, of, of Jake, man, of Israel. You know, so what the Lord is gonna do, he's gonna gather them all together, and guess what? He's gonna fight against them. All right, and other ones destroy them. All right, that's ultimately what it's going into. That he said he's going to bring them down to the valley decision. You know, you got to tell y'all. Yeah, but you know that all goes back to the the Lord putting the evil thought in their head mm -hmm. against this wicked ass kingdom here. And you know, Babylon the Great, the the decrees that they have uh, written, they're not fair. You know what I'm saying? These countries they're tired of getting bulldozed by them. And the last country that we're gonna see, you know, like like uh brothers are saying all around the uh, the the nation of Israel, keep your eye on Uganda. Okay, that's gonna be the last place that you're gonna see probably uh Babylon the Great try to put their filthy hands in, you see. But when it comes to that point, you know, we already got footage of the Hamites saying that they want these devils to leave, whether they be uh, uh, South Germans or the so-called white man. They don't want these people here no more. Okay? And this is what we're going to see. We're going to see that, man. You're going to see these nations actually get fed up to the point of them pushing back against the so-called white man, which is the nation of Edom. It doesn't matter what what family they came from, Ashkenazis, Amalek, mm -hmm. any of those sons of Esau, they're going to push back, man. And when they push back, this is when this whole thing is going to jump off the rails. Because Job 9 and 24, the earth was given in today's hands, okay? The wicked. And they ain't going to like it. They ain't going to like these heathen nations coming up against them. They're not going to like it, man. But now they have the means to, and it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt to the point of them blowing this place off the map, the seat of Satan off the map. That's right, bro. I got uh, Jeremiah 50, verse uh, 22. Mm -hmm. A sound of battle is in the land and of great destruction. How is the hammer of the whole earth cut asunder and broken? How is Babylon become a desolation among the nations? I have laid a snare for thee, and thou art also taken, O Babylon, and thou was not aware. Thou art found and also caught because thou hast striven against the Lord. The yeah. Lord have opened to 
to lock it, bro. My bad. No, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, just finish uh, it. The Lord, had, the Lord have opened his armory and have brought forth the weapons of his indignation. But this is the work of the Lord, Yahweh, power of hosts in the land of the Chaldeans. Yeah. So when you when you look at that, right, <laughs> you know, the scriptures say that money is for defense, right? And if America economy implodes on itself, that's it for the defenses. That's how the whole hammer on the earth is going to be a cut cut asunder as well as, you know, these nations firing their missiles upon them. That's right. But first is first. They got to get out of that debt, that debt, that heavy, that heavy debt is what's going to really put them out of steam. They, they ain't got nothing to back them. They don't have nothing. And that greenback that they passing around, that, that's dying. Every day is dying. And these countries are not going to, they're not going to, you know, they're not going to be esteemed by it no more. They're not going to be, oh, yeah, well, he's coming with $100 million. Uh, yeah, yeah. They're not gonna do that no more. They're gonna like, mm, yeah, take your toilet paper and go down the street. Hey, the, like hey, the that. scripture says that. You know, they're gonna disregard their gold and silver. Oh, silver, yeah. Mm -hmm. And real quick, if I may mention, because I know Karab uh, quoted uh, Exodus fifteen and three. You know that Yahweh is a man of war. You know, as when I read in Jeremiah fifty and the twenty third, the Lord has opened up His armory. You know, mm -hmm. and had brought forth His weapons for His indignation. So this is all in the power of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. You know, this is his will to ultimately to gather these uh, militaries, these other nations as as you know, on the chessboard, moving these pieces ready to checkmate. And that checkmate is Babylon the Great, you know, mm -hmm. and all these other nations are going to shoot off their missiles. As the Lord says, well, uh, in our second Ezra, the, the 16th chapter, the 13th verse, you know, the, the right hand of the Lord is going to be gathering these missiles to fulfill his will. man. So okay. the, the America has is no. Uh, it can't have any chance of fighting against the Lord or withstanding the, the, the will of the Heavenly Father. And that's what you said. It's Jeremiah 49 and verse 14. I have heard a rumor from the Lord, an ambassador is sent unto the heathen, saying, gather ye together and come against her and rise up to the battle. Mm -hmm. Also, yeah, they, you, no, got you got it. You got it no, you got it, brother. You got it, brother. Get your good. No, I was going to say, that's also linking up with uh, what we read in uh, Joel, the third chapter. You know? Yeah. Talking about those nations, uh, basically, uh, uh, rising up to the battle. All right, but you uh, got it, bro. Yeah, nobody, nobody, nobody. Um, it reminds me of that movie Home Alone when he said, "I'm not afraid anymore." Did you hear me? Nobody's mm -hmm. afraid of America. And then, and then it's to the point where even if you you do have some type of fear, it's something where you un you understand. Well, you got to take that lick. You know what I'm saying? And you got to use yeah. what you have to your advantage. Like if you, you you fighting somebody that um. That you know your army, they may have a longer reach than you, so you you, you go in with the mind frame of hey, I may have to take a couple of licks, but I, I got to get to this motherfucker, and that's the sentiment of the, the nations around the world, and and it's centered off the hypocrisy. They see they they see the hypocrisy that's in America, and 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 and, and it's like the the uh the drunkness when it starts to wear off. You know, when you drunk, you easily took an advantage of. But as you get sober and you recollect in your mind that you say, hey, look, like, 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 like we've been being played. We've been duped this whole time. So America could never the West. Could, like you, you read earlier to me, um, I believe you said it. Uh, somebody said it. Uh, 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 we, we could never trust the West again. But that sentiment is in the whole of the East. India, like you said, you know, they, they talked about the imperialism of America and the hypocrisy. Of America, they they can never trust America again. Even the European nations, going to Macron, going to France, going France. to Germany, which really don't really deal with America. They really don't like America, but they don't really vibe with America. All right, China, going into uh, Taiwan, and how they just mobilized, I believe, one hundred and fifty thousand tr uh, troops, getting them ready. You know why? Yep, getting them ready to uh, uh, basically to go into Taiwan to try to secure an economic future for themselves. Currently, they all have um, a, a deals and everybody has a deal and agenda. But at the end of the day, the point is uh, uh, concerning the scriptures that we brought out that America is the target. She has the bullseye and she's the uh, common denominator of a lot of problems that the world face. 
And these are the heathenistic nations. There's plenty of videos of what America has done to Haiti, uh, South America, um, the Jakes, the Israelites, the natives, so-called Native Americans, all right, Judah, uh, Benjamin, Levi, the so-called uh, blacks in America. You know, this is a, a whole total different story. But what we're talking about is the nations finally starting to arise and, and getting ready to go up against her and battle and her being, you know, the Babylon, you know. Edom, you know, Esau turning on himself, realizing, like, look, man, we've created a monster in uh, uh, this whore, you know? Yeah. yeah that's that it's, problem, bro. It's, it's, a, it's a war going on on all fronts, man. But this this part of the war or the fire that's kindled, this is this is the, the crust of the matter. This is what's going to give us our, our salvation, so to speak. Once these nations fall, because then it's only one living true power that's going to come and rule over everything, you know, putting many crowns on its head, like the scriptures say. So we need these nations to be taken down. Matter of fact, the, the, the fire that's kindled in between, you know, Jacob and Esau <clears throat> themselves. OK, this is this is going to end it all. Because they're going to be little on the earth then. You get what I'm saying? They're not going to be anybody. And we're going to be on top. Pursuing to, uh, uh, what's that? Where it says that we shall be his battle axe and his weapons of war. Jeremiah. Jeremiah. You see? So this this thing has to happen. Right. Okay? And, and, you know, true believers in Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, we know what's going on due to the scriptures that was left behind, the prophecies that was left behind for us to uh, hold fast to, man, and have faith in, okay? But when it comes to that other uh, fire that's kindled, man, these people got a long way to go, man, and, and a lot of people are going to suffer death by pain, okay? Right. Because they're not, they're not being repentive and they're not bowing down to the will of the Heavenly Father, which is to get in subjective subjection to them if you're an Israelite, okay? And we only know that 144,000 of our people are going to get in subjective subjection to them along with the one-third elect, okay? But when it comes to them outside nations, man, yeah, they got to crumble, man. They got to go down, okay? That's right. There's all, all these other nations had their, like the brother Karab said, had their hand in the downfall in Jake, man. You know, they had that crafty council in Psalms 83. You know, they were confederate on bringing us down. Hey, the Lord yeah. doesn't forget that. You know, he required if uh, required which has passed. So the, the whole purpose of Yahweh sending Yahweh Shai is to deliver the elect of Israel, man, and Israel only. You know, okay. we're the ones that are oppressed. We're the ones that have been going through the suffering. You know, going through the curses ultimately because we fucked up. So the Lord used as example to put a weak man, a base man over us and have these other nations confederate with him to bring us down. But now we are in the rise and seeing the decline of the downfall of our enemy. And it's all right. because the Lord had put his spirit into the servants, the prophets to wake up. And like, as the scripture says, and brothers mentioned it in this article, I mean, in this uh, lesson, excuse me. That only the election is going to obtain it. And that's why it blesses right. our eyes that we can see it and we can hear it. And we are constantly have to stay on our watch to usher in Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shad, man, because that's the new heaven and new earth, which is going to dwell righteousness. But before yeah. we can see that peace and heaven on earth, you know, as it is in heaven, war is necessary. War must come. And that's going to lead to the downfall of Esau, you know, downfall of the quote unquote great kingdom, Babylon the Great, aka America. It's going to happen. God never blessed America. He's God. going to bless America with missiles, man, and with That's fire. It. You know? Yeah. Uh, this is, I got I got one. Uh, Joe, because going to what you said concerning, you know, why why all this is happening, you know, it's important to state that. Um, Joel chapter 3, verse 1. For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and I will bring them down into the valley of Yahweh Shabbat. Yeah. I will be with them for my people and for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. Yeah, that's the reason. That's the reason why. 
the Lord is bringing all these other heathen nations, armies and militaries in the Valley of the Howard Shapat, which is the Middle East, to ultimately destroy them, to be, uh, to, 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 to metaphorically remove the chains off the Israelite, uh, off the Israelites, man, to deliver us, man. And, and he has to show his power. And I believe the brother Tazayaf mentioned, you know, the Lord's coming back to, to take all these crowns, you know, it's because he's the one that's going to be the official power on earth, man. And then he's going to set those crowns on the elect, man. That's right. Not, God. not you Israelis. You Israelis don't have a stake in nothing because y'all, right. y'all know y'all heritage. That's right. see, that's the number one thing that pisses me off every time we talk to these Khazars and these Khazarians and these Ashkenazis, okay, is that pride. That pride supersedes you. You're nothing on the earth. But what they okay. do have a stake in something. They got a stake in slavery. That's Others it. They got a stake in That's death it. of slavery. Con, con. Recompense. Yeah. Um, hey, because it's just... It's a lot here, brother. My fault. Um, just because the brother mentioned it, um, you know, the scripture do says that uh, when the true Israelites are in their land and they're ruling, there will be no more wars. You know, Yahweh Shai will dwell with us. So that's also another indicator. You know, those quote unquote Israelis, you know, they're in the Holy Land, but they're not the holy people because ultimately there's war going on day by day. You can just look at the news. What's going on? All these famines, these plagues. You know, there's still weapons out here, and, and our Lord and Savior is not in Israel right now. So that's an indicator, you know, that the true Israelites are not uh, in the, the land today. I just wanted to add on to that. Con. Uh, verse 3. And they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for a harlot and sold a girl for wine that they may drink. Yea, right. what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon, and all the coasts of Philistine, uh, Palestine? Will ye render me a recompense? And if you recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head, because you have taken my silver and my gold and have carried into your temples my goodly present things. That's the right. children of Judah are the children of Slachia also of Judah, and the children of Jerusalem have you sold unto the Grecians, that you may remove them far from thy border. Mm -hmm. Behold, I will rise them out of the place where you have sold them, and I will return your recompense upon your own head, and I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hands of the children of Judah, and they shall sell them. Uh, Slakia, they shall sell them. Uh, to the Sabians. Yeah. To a people far off, and the Lord have spoken. Yeah, see, so they, they took the jewelry of the Heavenly Father. You know, the Israelites, Judah, and then the rest of Israel. We're, 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 we're the Lord's Cuban link. We're the Lord's diamonds. We're the Lord's, you know, chosen. So now he wants that recompense, man, and he's getting it back by blood. You know, there's no way, there's no other way. You know, it's going to be through war by blood, as I think uh, Numbers, uh, the 33rd chapter, I believe, the 35th. You know what I'm saying? The only, the only way uh, to see recompense, to see uh, our just due is through the blood of those that shed our blood, you know? I got, I got preset. Uh, actually backing up what the brother uh, Zion had brought out. This is Jeremiah 50. I'm going to start at verse 4. In those days and in that time, saith the Lord, the children of Israel shall come, they and the children of Judah together, going and weeping, they shall go and seek the Lord their power. All right, which mm -hmm. is uh, going into that repentance. All right, and that, this is the time period that we're in. All right, you have the elect that's turning back to the Arab Asher and Alshad. All right, and it says, uh, verse 5, they shall ask the way of Zion with their faces thitherward, saying, Come and let us join ourselves to the Lord in a perpetual covenant that shall not be forgotten. My people have been lost sheep, their shepherds have caused them to go astray. They have turned them again, turned them away on the mountains. They have gone from mountain to hill. They have forgotten their resting place. All right. Which also goes back to the to the Joel the third chapter. You know, basically, our people were sold from nation unto nation, you know, say under the captivity under this nation and captivity under that other nation, you know, and there was not found no resting place, right? It says, all that found them have devoured them, and their adversary said, uh, going back to Psalms 83rd chapter, it says, mm -hmm. and their adversary said, we offend not because they have sinned against the Lord, the habitation mm -hmm. of justice, even the Lord, the hope of their fathers. The hey, come real quick, if I may mention, they feel that... They know that we sin, so they think their hands is clean. 
Like they didn't have no. I, I'm thinking of Ecclesiastes the eighth chapter and the eleventh verse. You know, yeah. they think that they they can continue to do wickedness, and the Most High is actually uh, 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 backing them up. But ultimately, that recompense is going to fall upon them, man, because they yeah. again touch the jewelry or the apple of the Lord's eye, man. Yeah, yeah. Isaiah forty two and twenty two goes into that. Yeah, come. On. You oh. know, and that's 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 us, man. And this is why the, the Lord is going to get down on these people, man, in the worst way, okay? And when he crush them, he's going to crush them, and they never going to stand up ever again, man. Right. And the earth is ours forever, okay? Yahweh being the head, Yahweh shy, and then the 144,000, man. It's, the game time is over, man. Game time is over. You got to really... <clears throat> Be rooting and grounded in this thing that's about to uh, uh, transpire. This time that's about to transpire. Let's say that. Because this is definitely perilous times, man. Okay? You're going to see a little bit of everything, man. And those regions over there that we're speaking of right now, when these bombs and stuff start going off over there, man, don't drop no tear for those people, man. Those people help further your affliction, man. That's right. Those people Sorry. held themselves a great esteem on the face of the earth while holding us down with their foot on our neck, man. And I can't wait. I can't wait for Yahweh Bashem Yahweh to come back swinging swords and the host of heavenly angels to come through, blowing things up out of, out of the earth, man, with them laser beams turning people into powder and all that. It's coming, man. I got a piece up to back you up on that. This is Lamentations 2 and verse 15. All that passed by clapped their hands at thee. They hissed and wagged their heads at the daughter of Jerusalem, saying, Is this the city that men call the perfection of beauty, the joy of the whole earth? All thy enemies have opened their mouths against thee. They hiss and gnash their teeth. They say, We have swallowed her up. Certainly, this is the day that we looked for. We have found it. We have seen it. Yeah, all 18 nations. All 18 nations said that. Okay. Seventeen, I believe. It's seventeen, Salaki. Seventeen nations said it. Okay. We at a point right now in in the history of time, people with no language, people with no uh no military, people with no riches. I don't care if you got your your greenbacks in your pocket, they still ain't your riches. We're the only people on the face of the planet like this. It's nobody else. Hey, real quick, if I can land back, we're the only nation that needs for salvation. We are That's the it. only nation that needs to be healed and cleansed, man, from this wicked world, man. And that's what the Lord's going to do, man. It's, can't this you is a, dig it, like my man Cyrus would say. <laughs> can can, I can you dig it? Yeah, that's because right. like uh, Yahushai is the ultimate physician. So the scripture says, uh, he that be whole needed not a physician. So, uh, like Taz was saying, like, um, if there's, no, if there's a nation who need to be saved from the condition, from the people be, being at the bottom for so long, it's our mm -hmm. people. We don't want that qualified to be exalted, to be raised up. Because uh, the scripture says, uh, be for honor is humanity. The Lord Yahweh Shemashai put us in a condition that we have no other way, no other option. But to turn to him, and that's exactly what uh, uh, the whole member of the like are doing. We are repenting, we are seeking Yahweh Bashim because we understand that he's the one that put us in this condition. So, by default, he's the only one that can get us out of it, man. And that's exactly what it is, man. You know, I got, I got a little bit more on this Jeremiah 50. You know, mm -hmm. anybody can take it. Uh, this is Jeremiah 15, verse 8. It reads, remove out of the midst of Babylon and go forth out of the land of Chaldean, of the Chaldean, and be as the he goes before the flock. For lo, I will raise, I will raise and cause to come up against Babylon an assembly of great nations from the north country, and they shall set themselves in array against her. From thence shall she be taken, their arrows shall be as a mighty expert man. None shall return in vain. Hey, that goes right in the second Ezra's. The 16th chapter 16th and the 13th chapter. Verse. Yep. You know? 
You know, once them, them arrows are sharp from that mighty archer, which is a metaphor, you know, from the missiles shooting out them silos, ain't going to be no timeouts. Ain't going to be a disable button or those going back into a silos. Once they're shot out, man, they're going to go into the ends of the earth and they're going to go through all both, you know, uh, four corners of the land. But it's mm -hmm. prophesied that 200 million missiles or warheads are going to hit Babylon the Great. That's according to Revelation, the ninth chapter. So that's the bullseye of the Heavenly Father. You know, the eyes upon the Lord is upon that sinful kingdom, which is twofold. You can use it to Babylon as that bullseye of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Yeah. 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 If I may add, right, when you go to the word, the answer, the answer of earth, that's really talking about America. You know, because mm -hmm. like the, the world, like, you know, the the ancient world was known. So when the prophets wrote about the, the, the ends of the earth, that's talking about huh. over here in America, man. That's yeah. it, that's the land that the Lord Yahweh Bashem has a controversial with man for what they have done to his people for what they have done to his chosen man and the lord gonna make sure that he make a public example of this place to uh the lord's gonna make sure the uh the nation's witness what happened to a kingdom that goes that goes against everything that the lord stands for and also oppresses on people man you know <laughs> oppresses his people the lord gonna make a public example of this, uh, out of this place and that's so much so that this place will never ever be inhabited anymore man you know Oh, yeah, that's yeah. that's why the scripture is there that says Esau is the end of the world. That's right. And Jacob is the one that, that follows. That follows, yeah. You see? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a and that, that, that explained it, that explained it perfect. That's right. You know? Yeah, that's the whole that's the whole end of the world that's coming soon. It's not the mm -hmm. end of the whole earth. We know the earth abide forever, you know. To see the sea. Yep, the, ki the kingdom of heaven must be on earth as it is in heaven, man. So it's not mm -hmm. the end of the whole planet. It's the end of Esau's rulership, his heaven, man. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we're here to, again, to give warning to you other nations what the, your judgment's going to be. And ultimately to our people is to get right and repent before these days come. This is why we bring up articles. We measure the time diligently. The brother Karab brought out, be circumspect. These are our, our tasks, our duties to be a watchman and to let you know that this is the time that we're, we're embarking on, man. Rob, uh, can, I get a piece, can I get a piece up, bro? Uh, come, first come, Peter come. 4 verse 7. What is it? Uh, first Peter 4 verse 7. Come, come, I got you. First Peter 4 and verse 7. Mm -hmm. It reads, but the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what it is. The end of the system. The end of Esau rulership, man. That's what I in end because um, the scripture says the earth will battle forever. So, Esau like to twist this word around, like right, right, or oh, the end of the world, meaning like everybody gonna be destroyed. No, nah, that's your end. That's Esau's end. You know, <laughs> our, our kingdom is coming. We have a we have a a, 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 a kingdom to look forward to. But these devils, they so into miserable of company. They feel like if they if not, if they're not willing, nobody else can, man. You know, so your end is at hand, man. And our kingdom is coming. Esau's uh uh, uh Esau's end is our beginning, man. What's our second uh, seven verse nine? Because two kings cannot be sit in the same throne. In order for us to war, this devil they gotta go down, man. Oh. Oh, so brother Zion, you there? Uh, yeah, I'm here, bro. You got something to say? Uh, you know no. I, I guess oh, yeah. I, could, I could close it out with this if uh, as, unless brothers have others uh, um others precepts, but um if y'all don't mind, just uh build with me real quick. Um, what is it? Uh, Ecclesi Ecclesiasticus, uh, 25 verse uh, seven. Mm -hmm. There be nine things which I have judged in my heart to be happy, and the tenth I will utter with my tongue. A man that have joy of his children, and he that liveth to see the fall of his enemy. Mm -hmm. And that's what days we living in, man. Yeah, it's beautiful, bro. It's beautiful, like it's beautiful to, to regardless of what, what it is that whatever that you're going through, whatever hell, whatever bill you laid on, or whatever you gotta pay, or however you gotta work, to note that this is this is is evident and clear as day that we're living in the days in which our enemies is about to fall. You know, Esau Esau is going down. His his he's in a he's in straight right now. You know, he's plateaued at his height. And, and this devil is on a free fall straight to the pit of hell. Just like it states in uh, Isaiah, the 14th chapter, when it says, I, I behold uh, Satan. I know, oh, actually, uh, Lucifer, far from, yeah. out, out, from heaven. Oh, Lucifer, son of the morning. 
you know, and in, 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 in which each and every passing day, brothers, these devils are going down. So, you know, pray, be circumspect, be on point, watch, you know, meditate, you know, on, on, on these precepts, on, on the laws, on the writing, you know, study, to teach, to be on point. Because like it tells you in uh, Second Ezra, how the Heavenly Father is, is taking um, wisdom and he's putting it, he's hiding it, he's putting it in, in a chamber and you see that that's happening all throughout the world with these women, with these kids, with news anchors, with politicians. Everybody's fucking losing their mind, you know. There's no no wisdom, and not just wisdom of the scripture, but just you know, just basic knowledge, common basic knowledge. common yeah. wisdom. You know, it, it's being withdrawn from people, but that's a beautiful thing because the scripture say wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of thy time. So the heavenly Father is is he's doing something here, you know. He's 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 making us intelligent beings right before our faces as he abstracts the wisdom from these people man and it's a beautiful thing to see and, and that will be uh, that's going to be your stability that's going to be uh that's what's going to make a man of the lord stand out in these latter times man that's what's going to make a man of the lord more precious as stupider and stupid these women are retarded these kids yeah. every, everybody the teachers just there's no <laughs> common sense there's no common sense nowhere man and, and, and but that's a good thing all right yeah. All right, so uh, with that, I hope and pray that that was edifying. We want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh. Double honors to the elders and the apostles, the two leaders of Israel today. Peace, love, and salutations to the Bayafta Wadah, the house of David. Shalom. 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 Shalom.